It's a real conundrum as you become successful because you're in a situation where if your children ask you for something, there's no formal reason for you to say no, you know, because you can provide whatever is being requested. But by doing that, you steal from them the opportunity to generate that for themselves. And that's, I suppose, one of the dangers of, well, it's the, one of the dangers of prosperity. What that does to people over the long run, I don't think we understand well yet because most people haven't been prosperous for very long, right? There's been plenty of privation to go around. And of course, there still is in many, many parts of the world, including in the United States and in the West. There's a rule if you're a social scientist, and the first rule is, in some sense, to look at context before you look at personality. And I think there's been a lot of really radical changes in our society in the last 50 years, and we don't understand their consequences. The most radical change is probably the birth control pill, um, because it's provided women with voluntary control over the reproductive function, and that's a equivalent to a a major biological mutation, right? It's, 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 its consequence is virtually incomprehensible. I mean, partly one of the consequences is, is, you know, where you, where reliable birth control is provided to women, first of all, they immediately become educated. Second, their economies tend to grow. And third, the birth rate falls below replacement. And then all three of those factors are monumental, you know, so, um, perhaps especially the third, the falling of the birth rate be below replacement, which is the case in virtually every country in the Western world except the United States. We don't know exactly what the optimal conditions are under which you toughen up, let's say. Um, most children now have older parents, right? Because people aren't having children until they're in their 30s. And there's a big difference between having a parent who's in his or her 30s and having a parent who's in her, his or point. her 20s. Yep. The 20-year-olds are still kind of like kids, and they're going to be more usefully neglectful, I would say. Well, look, one, one of the things we used to do with my daughter when she was very little was, you know, she was about a year and a half, is we'd, we'd have her in a room alone, and she would usually complain about that for a few minutes, and then she'd find a way to amuse herself. You know, she, she liked to take books out of shelves and put them back in. And like, if, if you let her be, get through that initial bit of misery, then she would learn how to regulate herself. And, and she got very good at that. Um, and then, so that's a good example of minor privation having a positive influence. But you know, children used to have multiple siblings. And siblings toughen you up because there's tremendous competition in families among siblings. And they had younger parents who had fewer resources. And, you know, now parents are older, first of all. And second, they're more resource rich. And so they're more likely to schedule their children to death in some sense to provide them with all the opportunities that they feel would be useful. And that's understandable. And Plus, because they have fewer children, each child is in some sense more precious. You know, not like if you have 10 children, you don't love all of them, but you know, there's 10 of them. There's, there's only so much excess attention that can go around. And they do a, a lot of socializing each other rather than being socialized by parents. But if you only have one child, you know, you're gonna devote all your resources to providing them with absolutely everything you can provide them with. And, one of the dangers of that is that you'll overprotect them and you'll provide them with too much. And we don't understand those dynamics, right? We, we don't understand how much you should stay hands off your kids and let them go out there and make their own mistakes and, and find their own way. And, and that's, that's, well, that's tricky and, and we're ignorant about it. And so I think one of the consequences of that is that we do have a reasonable percentage of young people, maybe young adolescents, the kind that you hear about at university, who have been overprotected and overscheduled over and under-challenged in some sense. We extend that overprotection far longer than is helpful. Um, you know, it's hard though because, as I said, when you have resources, you can use them to make your children's lives, let's say, easier. But the question is, like, 
do you really want to make the life of someone you love easier? My wife and I had two kids and um, we didn't start late compared to most of the people we knew. I think, I think our first child was born when my wife was 29. Um, we certainly felt that we would have had more children if we would have started earlier. Um, there's no doubt that, and that this is a very important thing to know, you know, there's not that many things in your life that are of central importance. There's half a dozen, I would say. Um, there's your friends, there's your family, your intimate partner. Uh, by family, I mean your siblings and your parents, but then there's your children, there's your career, there's your educational trajectory, there's how you take care of yourself and protect yourself from temptation and what sort of useful things you do in the time that you're not working, but you know, children are a third of life, something like that, maybe more, and so I would certainly recommend that um, you don't miss it. Um, it's complicated because, of course, now in most situations, both parents have to work, and, um, but it's always been complicated to raise children. They, they take a, they're a long-term investment, but yeah, right, which is hard, which why it's hard, hard to even pay childcare workers, right, because the, the payoff for having a child doesn't occur until two decades later, or sometimes, sometimes four decades later. Um, but it's not something you want to miss, that's for sure, because it's, it's, well, that's life, you know. There's, it, it's, it's part of the human condition, and, um, and little children pay you back immensely if you have a good relationship with them, you know, if you're on their side and encourage them because they're an unconditional source of joy and love. The, the other thing I noticed that you should all know is that um, as you get older, your family, the family you've produced, becomes more and more important. You know, so we teach young women in particular that the fundamental goal of their life is going to be their career. And, you know, first of all, most people don't have careers, they have jobs, and those are very different things. But you're, you're not a very happy camper, so to speak, if you're 45 and you have no one and it doesn't go upwards after that. So don't miss it.